again, YouTube. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross, also known as the Oliver Man. And today I thought we'd talk about the 1550. You might have saw this tractor in my video with the 356 mower. That's mainly what uh, this tractor does most of the time. The Oliver 1550 was Oliver's replacement for the 770. When they came out with the 50 series, they started in 1964 with the 1650, 1750, 1850, 1950, but they didn't have a smaller model to replace the 770. They actually kept the uh, 770 and changed the styling a little earlier on when back in the days of the like the 1600 they changed it with a fiberglass checkerboard grill and put name spears on it and flat top fenders and so that run of those 770s lasted up into the changeover into the 50 series and people wanted a tractor about that size uh, so they came out with the 1550 to fill that gap in the line by the time that the uh, 50 series had come out, it was moving more and more towards the trend of higher horsepower. So I'm sure it was discussed whether or not even to uh, make a tractor in this size because they didn't know how many they would really sell. I know they really discussed that when the 55 series came out because the 1555 is a uh, lower production than a lot of the other models for that reason you just they didn't sell as many in that horsepower size uh, main tractors on the farm were becoming more and more in the hundred plus horsepower range and then your smaller second tractor was more in like the line of the 1650 size it became the second tractor as opposed to something like this so it wasn't uh, in as high demand maybe as it would have been back in the earlier days something of this horsepower size at first glance the 1550 looks almost identical to the 1650 but there are some major differences first of all the transmission the transmission in the 1550 is a spur gear transmission much like the older tractors were where the gears were straight cut teeth and the 1650 and larger had the helical cut gears which gave you a uh, longer mating surface so they didn't have the wine quite as bad i will say that by the time the 1550 came around the transmission wine is not nearly anything like it was in the older tractors so they certainly improved their uh, machining techniques i guess and got close enough tolerances that it wasn't quite as big a deal as it was back in the older days the main reason for going with the spur gear transmission in this tractor is it saved money it was a lot cheaper to have straight cut gears than helical cut gears and since they didn't think that this is probably going to be a high volume seller it was just as well to put the cheaper transmission in it so that they could keep the cost down and sell more tractors the 1550 used a smaller engine than what was in the 1650 and if you look at it at first you may not be able to tell much difference but when you get to the other side you can definitely see it's different it's got a oil filter that's laying down and that's the reason because this was a bypass oil filter and so it's very important when you change the oil in this that you get the correct filter here's the napa number of it because if you don't it would be about like if you were working in a hospital and you let a patient bleed to death the tractor would run itself dry from the inside out because the oil filter has a lot to do with the uh, pressure the oil pressure in the engine so if you have one that lets too much flow it's going to not have enough pressure and it's going to ruin your motor 
The 15 size tractors were offered with a hydropower right away from the beginning. They were never offered with an over-under, even in the 1555. This tractor, again, was to kind of cut down on costs, so you could get it with a straight shaft or you could get it with the two-speed hydropower, but that was it. Another point of interest on the 1550 is that while it looks like the 1650, they actually use sheet metal kind of like what was on the 1600 where this is all one piece and then it's got a mounting bolt back here and then you've got all your bolts here to take out and then these two at the bottom and this whole side comes off as one piece. So that's different than the other 50 series tractors where you had a combination of either like this panel would stay and the front panel and then you could just take the side off or whatever. After Oliver had put out the 1600, the horsepower was not quite as impressive, I guess, as people would have expected for a new tractor. The 880 was kind of still putting the 1600 to shame and that really bothered a lot of people. So. By the time the 50 series came out, they came up with this program of certified horsepower where they would put this sticker on. Every tractor that came off the line was put on the dyno and if it didn't make at least its guaranteed horsepower, then they took it back and either let it run for a long time to try to break it in or made adjustments or did whatever they had to do until it was certified at the minimum horsepower it was supposed to have and then they passed it on to the dealer for sale the 1550 used the same hydraulic unit like the rest of the 50 series but there were some changes to this hydraulic unit from like the 1600 and the 1800 and the biggest one is that on the early ones the hydraulic filter was over on the side and your priority valve was on the front they reconfigured that and pretty well this hydraulic unit remained unchanged all the way into the whites with the 270. It was the same design. This style hydraulic unit is what we call open center hydraulic, so oil has to be flowing all the time uh, to make a continuous circuit, otherwise it's going to blow your relief valve. And you could get it set up for one or two remotes but no matter what you had the tractor came with uh, two remote handles so if you only had one out the back then the other side just had pipe plugs in and you could add it whenever you needed it this lighter style hydraulic unit provided uh, places where you could add power beyond in other words you could circulate hydraulic oil out of this unit and use it to power an external valve and you have to go in behind this plug and then there's another set of threads back in there and you could cap that off and then your oil will come out of there and then you could put it back into the reservoir back there and like I said open center the oil has to be flowing all the time or it's going to blow the relief valve so if you buy an external valve and want to do that you need to make sure that you have an open center valve and that you have enough gallons per minute that it's going to work right and circulate so that everything works correctly. If you decide you want an external valve on there but you don't want to go to the trouble of having to take the internal plug out of here all the time, the easiest way to do it is to just, when you run your hoses out of the unit, you put a male end on one and a female end on the other and then you couple them together whenever you take the valve off and then the oil can keep going where it needs to go and you don't have to change the uh, anything on the internal side of this in order to keep using it. I'm going to make another video sometime about uh, fill and drain plugs because people ask me questions about that all the time but while we're right here this is where your rear end oil goes in and then this is where your hydraulic oil goes in. So both very easy to get to. Usually this has a metal plug over it, but it's been taken out and never put back. So one of these days I'll probably get another one and put it in there just to say that everything's the way it should be. As I said in the last video, one of the big features of the four digit tractors was having an integral draft sensitive three point hitch. And what I mean by that is, 
on older tractors, your three-point hitch consisted of either just up or down or maybe a position or two in between, but you had to manually raise and lower it and put it wherever you wanted, and then that's where it stayed. On this setup, you have this linkage, which through these lower uh, C channels here, the bracketry is mounted, and depending on how you have it set, as the load changes and kind of pivots these brackets through your lower arms, it will raise or lower the hydraulics based on load. And so you can just put your implement down and it will worry about uh, raising or lowering depending on whatever load it senses uh, through the implement that you're pulling. This tractor is kind of uh, unique in the fact that this is the first one I've ever had that had the uh, claw delete on the arms and this was a factory option that they showed where you could essentially save a little money instead of getting the quick hitch type claws you could get this fixed ball and i don't remember what it was price wise but it did save you a little money and based on the person that bought this new i can see that he probably would have done that because any money he could save he would have wanted to the 1550 uses the uh, dry PTO clutch, much like the 1600, so nothing really changed there. These tractors also, for the most part, had 15 538s on them, and that was a relatively new tire size at the time. It's a size that's remained popular even today, so you can still find uh, 15 538s in a whole variety of brands, but uh, maybe not so many that are made in the USA. Another thing about uh, this tractor, I guess you'd say money saving, is it was ordered with pressed steel rear wheels, and then it's got a single wheel weight on each side. And again, the guy that bought it new, I would say that he tried to get as uh, few things as possible to try to save money because that's just the way he was. One thing that's unusual on this gas 1550 is it has the deluxe pre-cleaner. And I don't know why it was ordered that way or what was the reason. The only thing I can think of is maybe they put this on there because this tractor spent its life on a dairy farm and spent its time uh, grinding feed and doing a lot of things that might have been in the dust. So. They might have wanted this uh, to help prolong the engine's life, but I really don't know. Most of the time, you only see the deluxe pre-cleaner on the diesels up until you get to like the 55 series, then you pretty well see this all the time. Another difference between uh, the later 50 series and like the 1600, 1800 is the 50 series use dry uh, air filter elements where your 1600 and 1800 would have had an oil bath uh, air cleaner up here. So that was one improvement they made on the uh, 50 series tractors. The 50 series all had the tilt and telescope steering setup where you could tilt it out of your way in about three positions. And then if you turn this knob, it's hard to do one-handed. And then you could pull on the steering wheel. This one's stuck, but they're supposed to slide in and out and then you could tighten this down and they would stay wherever you put them if you wanted it closer or farther away from you. Another thing about the steering is you can see down in there the, what I call the hydrostatic steering unit because there is no mechanical connection between the steering wheel and the front wheels. It's all done with hydraulics, which has its pros and cons. The pros in my mind are that it is very, very good power steering, very effortless power steering when it's working right. Uh, it gives you the ability to have that tilt and telescope wheel without uh, much trouble. The only bad thing is, is if you blow a hydraulic line, that's pretty well where you sit because there is no other means to connect the front wheels to the steering motor. I have already uh, 
when I've worked on other people's stuff and they blew a steering line, I'm thinking of one in particular. It was on an 1850. It was out in the middle of a field, way far away from anything I could get to. And the wheels were turned to one side. But what I actually did is I drove it closer because I made a big arc and got it pretty close to where I was at so I didn't have to go as far to work on it. But otherwise, there's really no way to uh, steer it without losing a bunch of oil or uh, not being able to control it. So you gotta pretty well fix it where it sits. The 50 series featured uh, five gauges instead of just uh, a few like on the 100 series. The 1600 and 1800 used warning lights for oil pressure and the ammeter and now on these 50 series you have your temperature gauge fuel gauge ammeter oil pressure gauge and your speedo tack here that has your engine hours and your ground speed you can see pto speed there about 2200 rpm overall i find that the 1550 is a pretty handy little tractor i didn't know if I would really use it as much as uh, any of the others because I've got several 16 size tractors but I do like driving this little tractor but like I said it mostly spends its time on that mounted mower because I don't like taking that on and off but I use it then I don't know every couple weeks in the summer mowing ditches and things so it sees a lot of use I got this tractor on a partial trade for doing some work for a guy and like I said before I take Oliver's as currency I, I do like getting paid with Oliver stuff so he had acquired this tractor uh, from the guy's family who had bought it new and it was just sitting in the shed and hadn't been used for several years and so when I got it it didn't run I can put some pictures in it of what it looked like when I got it and the guy I bought it from actually brought it down here for me. He had a little dolly thing made behind a Massey Ferguson and he picked it up without front wheels on it and brought it over here and set it in my driveway. So I didn't have to do a thing. But it uh, had several issues. The biggest one was there it had water in the oil and I ended up actually fixing that with some miracle in a can and it's worked so far so that's pretty good the other thing that it had wrong with it is once I got it running it uh, it had a miss in it and the miss was one of those things where it seemed like it was a stuck valve or something like that because I've had that many times and that's exactly the way it runs. And it had terrible spark plug wires on it, but all the plugs look brand new. And this is a good example of don't assume uh, that everything's okay because it might be something simple. So I took the valve cover off, didn't find any stuck valves. I readjusted all the valves and it wasn't really wasted effort because there was a lot of sludge up under the valve cover and I'm glad I got that cleaned out. But I put it all back together and I had put new spark plug wires on it and it still had this miss and I thought, I can't believe that, you know, it's, it should, it, everything looks fine. So I started taking the plugs out one at a time and checking them and they were all checking okay until I got to this very last one. And what the guy had done, I don't know if you can see how this is, but this breather tube is right on top of that plug. I don't know who designed that, but they weren't really thinking very well, because you can see you have to bend the boot to get it on that plug. And what he had done is when he changed plugs and put that in and was trying to get it in there without taking this tube off, he smashed the plug flat. And so there was no gap and when I pulled it out that was it all I did was gap it and put the plug back in and it ran like a dream so what I do on these is I just take this tube out of the way so you got room to work 
I talked a little bit about serial numbers in one of my other videos, but uh, on this one, on these four digit tractors, your prefix of your spec number is three digits. And what this tells us is that this is the second revision of a 1550. So if it was an early one, and I'm not exactly sure about that on a 1550, I'll have to look up what year this one is. But really the first 1550, we started with a 155 on the uh, model number. But I'll have to go back and check that because I'm not 100% sure on that. But basically this uh, 55 means that it's a 1550 and the two is the second revision so by the time you get to 1555 it was probably a 355 and then whatever the rest of your model number was so again this tractor spent its entire life here in our county it was sold by our dealer which was the jackson jennings farm bureau co-op and it spent its entire life on a dairy farm and then uh, i ended up with it by doing some trading like I said, I worked on a little front wheel assist Ford for a guy who had bought it from the original family. And the reason that he got involved with it was he had bought back another tractor at the same time that his dad had owned, a big Massey Ferguson, like a, I think it was an 1130. But anyway, they had bought that when his dad had had a farm sale. So both of these tractors were sitting in the barn and didn't run. And this guy bought them both for one money and whenever i went over to work on this little ford and i saw this sitting in the barn i just i had to have it so i told him i said when we're done i said we're going to work out whatever you got to have and that thing's coming home with me so that's how i ended up with this remember if you like oliver and white tractor videos please subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button it doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out. So if you could do that, I would be thankful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.